you were told something at a wrong time. So basically what I'm trying to get at is that God reveals stuff to us in due time, and then we are to, to act accordingly upon that. So the fact that God told me to come here and speak to you guys is, and, and women is letting me know that you are ready to receive what it is that God asked you to. You are at that mature level in, in Christ or in life that he feels you can receive what I'm trying to tell you. How many people have heard the late or have heard of the Lady Gaga song Born This Way or at least heard the phrase before I was born this way? I was born into poverty. I was born uh, with a limp. I was born with a hole in my heart. I was born homosexual. I was born into a family of gangbangers. This, that, and the third. A lot of people say that, and to me, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend anybody. I will make that clear. But when it comes to Christ, Christ does not cater to emotions. He tells you exactly what he said in the beginning of the time, and you either choose to follow it or you don't. So there are things in the Bible that God has commanded you to do, things that God has commanded you not to do, and you have to be born again. No matter how you're born, you can't say, oh, well, I was born poor, and I'm a product of my environment, so I'm going to just stay this way. I'm going to just stay how I am, and I'm not going to do anything about it. You have to be born again in his nature. Christ is rich. Not, you know, with the you know thousands and the stacks and all this and the third. He's rich as a person. You have to be born again into his nature. And Nicodemus at one point was talking to Jesus. And Jesus told him, you're not going to see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Point blank, period. I love the whole chapter of John 14, but I brought out this one scripture from it. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody goes to God unless they go through me. There are denominations that do not believe in Jesus. They're not going to see God unless they go through Jesus. If, that's, if you believe in God and you believe in his word, you would know that you're not going to God unless you go through Christ. How do you get to Christ? Anybody know? You have the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you have to go through the Son to get to the Father, who do you have to go through to get to the Son? Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? No. I think that it's uh, I didn't know when I was at Chanel either and I think that's a shame because our sister school is called Holy Spirit Academy we do the Father, Son, Holy Spirit day in, day out, we don't even know what it means we don't know what it is the Holy Spirit is the comforter that was sent when Jesus ascended to heaven Jesus was made manifest as a man and a man cannot be everywhere at once but a spirit can there was a point during the Last Supper where Jesus was telling the disciples, like, I'm about to go be with my father. And they started freaking out, like, what you talking about? Like, you my homie, you my brother, you can't leave me. Like, Peter always over here saying dumb stuff, asking about trees withering away, and asking these dumb questions like he don't know nothing, like he ain't seated. Thomas over here doubting, Mary in the corner crying, like, you can't leave, it's going to be chaos. Man, you, you, you are a leader, what are we going to do without you? And he told them, it's expedient that I leave you. What does expedient mean? He has to. It's necessary. It's imperative that I leave you. Or the Holy Spirit is not going to come. It's better for you that I leave you. Because the Holy Spirit was there when God uttered the perfect plan for each and every one of y'all's lives. Question, sir. If he knew everything about your life, God told him everything about your life. Who you were supposed to marry? What kind of car you going to drive, how many figures you would make, how many kids you would have, where you would live, how often would you talk to him? Like, every day. Every day. The Holy Spirit knows all of these things. The Holy Spirit knows your plan from birth to death. How do you, how do you use the Holy Spirit, though? Like, what are you talking about? The Holy Spirit evidence is speaking in tongues. Some people don't believe in it, but it clearly states it in the Bible. If you don't believe me, look it up. Tongues. Um, tongues is a language, your personal one-on-one -on -one language with God, that you cannot understand. Your mind profits nothing because it sounds like gibberish. 
is not a language like French, Spanish, German, English, any of that. It's not a, a worldly language. It's a heavenly language that you share with God. The devil has been along, uh, around just as long as God has. So he knows French, German, Spanish, English, all of that. So when you're praying in English about a situation that you want to get out of or something that you want, he can hear you. And he knows what to do to prevent you from getting that or to make, at least make it seem like you're not going to get it because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So he'll do everything he can to block that prayer. But when you're praying in the spirit, he doesn't understand it. So that is your weapon against the enemy that God has given to every person on this earth. Not everybody is called to be a pastor. There's nine gifts of the spirit. Prophecy, words of knowledge and wisdom, like I don't know this man right here, but God could tell me something right now personal about him and I'll whisper it in his ear and he might not even know that because God told me. That's a gift. That The Holy Spirit praying in tongues is the only gift that you can do on purpose and it's the only gift that's given to everybody in the world. How do you pray in tongues though? When you go to Christ and you lay down everything and you get this peace about yourself, he will release the Holy Spirit to you. It's already in the inside of you. It's already there. So all you have to do is pray it out. You can pray it on purpose. He'll form the words for you. That's not going to play, but it was a scene from Coming to America where they had that little engagement party unbeknownst to the bride. She was getting engaged. And the pastor was speaking to her like, yeah, you know, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and Daniel got out the lion's den with God's help, and Gilligan got off the island. That part's not true. But, you know, at, in the Old Testament times, when Joshua was fighting that battle of Jericho, he was outnumbered. The sun was about to go down, and he asked God to keep the sun up, and God did it. David and Goliath. David was a scrawny little boy, fighting a big old giant, and won. Samson and Delilah. Daniel and the lion's den. The Holy Spirit came upon these people at the times that they needed extra strength and supernatural, supernatural intervention to do things that they could not normally do in their own power. But because Jesus was born after that and died and ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit now lives on the inside of you. You don't have to wait for God to release it to you. You have it inside of you and you can utilize it at any time. That is the ultimate privilege, the ultimate gift that any man had. John 14 and 12, like I said, I love this chapter. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with my father. I put it in the New Living Translation. For those of you who don't know, there are different translations that make things clear as day. Without the barely, barely, the other two, such and such. So what does that mean? Anyone who believes in me will do the same words I have done and even greater because I'm going to be with the Father. What does that mean? What works did Jesus do on earth? Getting there. What did he do when he was on this earth? What miracles did he perform? He killed a people. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He cast a demon out of people. There was a woman with an issue of blood. What that means is that she had a 12 year long menstrual cycle, like a period every day for 12 years, and she was healed in that through him. He uh, walked on water, and he said, if you believe in me, anyone who believes in me will do the same work I do. So that means I can walk on water. That means that I can cleanse the leper. If he was blind, God would heal him through my hands. And even greater things. What's greater than raising the dead? What could possibly be greater than raising somebody from the dead? I don't know, but I want to find out. And he said we could 